Good evening, everyone. Last session of the day, thanks for coming. I'm Graham Hudgens. We're gonna talk to you about designing and launching hub initiatives. This is... I'm Courtney Cousins. We're both product engineers on hub based in the DC desk. Yeah. So we have a quick agenda. Um, talk about what we think is initiative thinking and what we've learned you know, over the few years of working on open data and the hub. Um, then we'll get into what it, an initiative actually practically is in ArcGIS um, and online and then how to develop an initiative in today's tools. We'll give a demo, talk a little bit about where things are going if we have time, take questions. Um, end, of, end of the day session, so you know, happy to answer any questions at the end as well. So what is initiative thinking? Um, first, I'd like to tell a story. Um, imagine you, know, you come home, as I sometimes do, and <laughs> somebody asks you, uh, how was your day, what happened? And think about how do you answer that question. Um, some days you'll answer it with a non-response and maybe ask what's for dinner, but on the days that you actually do answer it, um, the first thing that comes to mind for me is to answer that question naturally, almost like a coworker would. Um, so for me, I might answer it by saying, Tom did our weekly release, but had some issues facing a failing E2E test because we had a developer commit something late on Monday which caused an hour of delay. And my loving significant other, you know, does one of these. And then I think about it and I actually answer it in a way that has a little bit more information. I say, we always try to release features once a week, and we have robots that help tell us if what we're shipping is broken, and one of them failed today, so we had an hour of delay. So initiative thinking is kind of this. Um, it is two things. It's considering the audience that has the least amount of context about you know, what you're doing, and it's communicating the goal of your work up front. Um, and it's not usually the natural thing. And what I mean by that is, um, when considering your audience, I kind of like think of it as like this circle. There's your coworkers in the very middle that know exactly what you do in your language, no need to encode it in any other way. And then there's your bosses and managers, and I put an arrow next to it because that's usually where you kind of present your work because you have somebody that, you know, hired you, controls your raises, gives you a bonus. Um, so that's kind of what you tend to think about when it comes to your work. And then as you move outward, there's other teams maybe in your organization that are influenced by your work, then there's people in your company, and then there's people outside your company, maybe in your industry, and so on. So we really wanna try to go as far outward as we can when presenting our work, because it'll ultimately be more engaging to others. So initiative thinking is considering your most external consumer of your work and clearly communicating an engaging goal, and it's totally okay to start doing it the natural way and work your way out. Um, in fact, that's kind of what happened to us in our R&D center. We did the exact same thing. So I, we work in the DC R&D Center at Esri. Uh, we make applications, some of them research focused, some of them actually development, hence the R&D. Um, and one of those applications is called Open Data, or was called Open Data, and now it's called the ArcGIS Hub. Um, and its first mission kind of follows that uh, same progression as those two statements to a significant other. <laughs> it uh, started with data out there on a website, and there's thousands of them actually now. Um, how many of you have an Open Data site? Anybody? Awesome. So yeah, it's great. Um, and there's a lot of different examples of open data sites, national, local, departmental, um, nonprofits, you name it. Um, so this is kind of what I think of as the maturity of uh, an engagement with your community is, you know, getting to open data is actually a really big milestone. And so if you haven't done that yet, it's, it's a great way of putting your work out there in a public way. Um, and it's, it's an important strategy for sure. But when you talk to your, about your work like you talk to your coworkers, you get a tweet like this one. And this one couldn't have come in at a more opportune time for this talk. Um, this is a tweet about Washington DC's open data site, about the usability of it. And this lady is pretty data literate and talks about how confusing it is to try to find property transfers in the city's open data site because there's this thing called land boundary changes and has this wall of text for a detailed description and is a great example um, just from yesterday of kind of that first way of responding and first way of packaging your work. So we started to see people readapt their work to be more um, towards the goals that they had. Um, this is a site from Loudoun County, Virginia, um, and they actually talk about improving commute times, helping build Loudoun's future, helping identify um, projects that are strategic and they don't just ask people to download data and work with it, they want people to actually provide opinions and become involved and take surveys and do things like that. So we start to see this pattern. 
Um, we also see that a lot of cities and a lot of places have similar problems. Um, you know, you're probably not the first area or government to deal with certain issues, and we see, see these patterns across our customers. Um, so, you know, if you live on a coast, chances are you deal with storms. If you're, you know, in a place that has agriculture, chances are you deal with water, and there's a lot of, you know, common patterns across. And so we really want to turn these aspirations that are common into templated initiatives that engage and interest people beyond just data on a site. And we want to ultimately take a government's website here on the left and your GIS and make interesting bridges that connect citizens to that information and to your work in a way that they don't necessarily you know, feel the technical burden of um, working on that directly. So we launched the product of the hub and kind of took over the open data concept to transform how our customers engage and collaborate with their community by focusing on goals and these initiatives. Um, so that hopefully we can go from formalized open data to organizing data around actual goals that you're solving, um, organizing apps and other more interesting things beyond the data for the people who aren't as technical, forming teams internal around those problems. You know, it's not just one person, it's other people. Uh, getting citizens involved, contributing opinions and data, and sustaining that engagement through events and other things, and ultimately getting to a point where your citizens are regularly participating on initiative projects and making apps and providing data and doing things like that. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. Um, so now Courtney is going to tell us what an initiative is in ArcGIS. Okay. So I'm going to give an overview of like what initiatives means to us within ArcGIS Hub um, and kind of talk about the different steps that we go through when we're thinking about making them, when we talk to people that are making them, um, show you a few examples, um, and we'll go from there. So initiative pages are kind of um, based off of the organization homepage, and on each of these initiative pages, there's a whole bunch of different applications. We have underlying data, but on the surface, it's how, are, how, are, how can we put this data into different applications that really communicate the information that's caught up in the data. Um, not everyone has high data literacy rates, and even if you do, when we saw in the case of DC with Kate Rabinowitz, who's like, she's a data scientist, she knows, um, having the data into applications and different narratives just kind of lowers that barrier for understanding. And what we're working on with initiatives is the ability to do that without having to have like super GIS analysts sitting there and to be able to start them from scratch. So we want to give people a kickstart to be able to create those things and create those like really good information products without having, without needing everyone to be a GIS expert. So this is a screenshot of our initiative gallery inside ArcGIS Hub. If you've gone to the Hub admin lately, you've seen this. And it's a whole bunch of different um, initiatives that we're currently working on. And we can see that this kind of reflects that slide that Graham showed before of all kind of like the shared goals and the issues that different communities are facing. We know that every community is different, but we all share common challenges. And it's a growing network of different things um, that we're working on and that we're working on with different partners. Um, and distributors that are creating their own initiatives and we can feed these back into the application for other people to, to like benefit from that knowledge and they don't have to start from scratch. So inside all of these initiatives, when you click into those, we get a package of stuff. The ArcGIS platform is grand. There's so many different applications that we're learning about this week, walking through the expo hall, there's just so much stuff. So how can we kind of package that in a way, um, like a recipe, like a template, for people to, to like get the most out of it, right? So we're inside an initiative, the first thing that we have is the modern mobile-ready website. Um, if you have an open data site, it's just a version of that. And then on side of that, we have charts and maps story maps, it's all underlined with authoritative data, so based on your original open data site. Different surveys and polls for people to be involved, dashboards, hub ready apps, solutions, it all goes into this page. And so people can come here and kind of have a one-stop shop for the different applications and data in your narrative for talking about what's going on 
in, in your community, what your mayor wants to focus on, what you want to focus on. So this is a screenshot of the admin side of it. So how do we get to that, to that page with all the stuff in it? Um, as I mentioned before, it's kind of like a recipe. Like we give you these starter packages for each specific initiative. This is reduce homelessness. So it has a specific set of applications that are pertain directly to this. Address opioid epidemic will have a different set. And it's, we organize it into steps um, that roughly go off of like inform, listen, engage, um, monitor. These are not de facto rules or anything. It's just a way to kind of start thinking about how we want to organize things so that we have a structure so it's easier for people to understand rather than just like a gallery page with a bunch of different apps in it and people have to like pick it out and things like that. And all of these applications, which um, I think Graham's gonna show you later, are kind of like ready made for you. You don't have to go out to Web App Builder and configure it. You just say, this is my homeless facilities data set, and you connect some, some fields, and we automatically build that for you. So you don't need to be a Web App Builder Pro to be able to create this content for people to engage with your data. And then this all goes into the web page. The main part of the initiative, like the public facing part is the web page. This is where people come. They learn about your goal, what your mission is, the narrative, the context. That's where they, that's where they engage with all the different applications and everything. Um, so each part of the initi initiative is very important, but if we could say there is one most important part, probably the part that gets the most eyes, right? So each initiative has its own web page template to give you a start for the particular um, problem that you're working on. Obviously, you can take that, adapt it to whatever um, particulars you have for your community and things like that. But there's a whole bunch of different templates in there for you to explore and for you to use and just kind of give you a head start. So we think about um, the initiative structure as these four different steps. If you go through the initiative gallery, um, not all of them say, Step one, inform. Step two, listen. They're kind of adapted for the particular thing. Um, but we think that these four kind of provide a holistic view to allow people to understand what you're working on, know how, and listen is what, what I'm going to go through all of them, but listen is like listening to your community, um, how they can contribute back data and their opinions, where people can meet both in online digital spaces but also in physical spaces, and then monitoring your initiative. Did we succeed? What is the point? Can we keep doing this? Do we have ROI? So for informing, this is a lot of, this is a lot of the web page. It's kind of like um, where we use story maps and stuff like that. Um, but we really want to communicate that goal and communicate how we are measuring it. We're going to talk about goals a little bit later and how that's kind of like the crux of the initiative. Um, we want to educate them, convey policies, share data and facts, and just all of that kind of, this is what we're doing. We want you to know about it. So for solutions for that, um, and this is kind of like what those apps are, the tiles on the initiative page, we have the site and data, story maps, web app builder, different configurations of it, and then page narratives. So using hub pages, you can kind of make your own dashboard within there and have different charts and maps and statistics and have people be able to read through that. So for listening, a big part of the hub is the community engagement piece, the collaboration between the government or your organization on one side and whatever community that you have, just the people on the street, um, other nonprofits, civic hacking organizations, things like that. All the people in the community that's walking by, we've heard of like citizen sensors, there's such a wealth of information and feedback cooped up in these people, right? So we wanna, we wanna, we wanna see how we can harness that. Um, so survey one, two, three, really simple, great tool to just survey populations. Um, all the results of survey one, two, three surveys go into a feature service that you can then analyze, put in a map, an app, do whatever with. Um, story map crowdsource is one configuration of a story map, or one template of a story map. 
Um, and then in Hub, there are data set comments. And comments on a data set is kind of like, okay, whatever, who cares? Um, it's just like one more community management thing that you have to do. Um, but we are working on better discussions and how can we actually foster that conversation rather than just you can comment on the school's data set. And then convene. So we want to create events where community can come together and meet each other, but then also come together and meet the government, whoever's putting on this initiative. Um, this can be digital spaces like the initiative homepage, it's like the initiative page itself, or also physical spaces, depending on the nature of the initiative that you're working on, if you wanna have like a public forum or a hackathon or things like that. And then so people can share knowledge. And we have hub events for that. It's a built-in feature um, with hub, part of the community piece. So you can create different um, places for people to meet. And then monitor. All of this is great, but like, if we can't prove that this is actually working, then our boss is not gonna let us keep doing it, right? There's only so many resources that we have in funding and stuff like that. So we wanna make sure, and this kind of goes back to our goal, we wanna measure our KPIs, our key performance indicators over time. We want to share outcomes. This is both sharing outcomes with the community, saying that like we actually are making contributions to lower traffic fatalities in our community. This is what we're working on and this is how it's working. But then it's also kind of showing um, on the admin side of things, the ROI on your work on the initiative, right? And then for that, we have operations dashboard, Web App Builder, again, page narratives, and integration with Google Analytics for the kind of the telemetry side, seeing how popular your pages are and things like that. But going off of that community piece with the events and stuff like that, so who are all these people? Initiatives have a community in that citizens can have their own identity. With the hub, you get an extra organization for all of your community people and everyone that would like to can sign up and get a named user account, a level two user account. They just sign up with their Facebook or their Google and they don't pay for that. That's part of like the hub license. And then there, they have all the capabilities of the ArcGIS platform. They can start creating applications. You can say, that's a really good application. We're gonna include it in our initiative. So that's a really great way to get um, like civic hacking groups involved to really like leverage the knowledge of our neighbors. And they can follow initiatives. If they don't, if they're not like super tech savvy or whatever, but they wanna keep up to date, they care about getting to work safely and things like that, they can follow the initiative to receive updates from you. So on the admin side, this is um, what it looks like, just a screenshot of the members page so you can see um, people's names, what their role is, how many initiatives they're following, how many events they've attended, things like that. So you can kind of, eventually, it'll bubble up being like, this person's been to eight different events. Do you have a question? Yes, so, say you have that data set and the survey set up for that identity for the survey? So, it depends on if your survey is public or not, and whether you allow anonymous contributions. So if you say that you have to sign in, then I think you do get the identity for, for the results, um, but if it's a public survey, then you don't capture it. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Survey one to three tracks when you log in. Um, if you take a survey and you are authenticated, you get to see the user that took the survey um, as extra data, and that's actually a pretty requested feature for this because otherwise you're not sure where it's coming from, so you can at least tie a survey response to an identity. Um, a big value add of having that extra community org is you can sign up people without an invite to a place that isn't in your organization but is like associated to your organization. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna show you some examples. This is a site that we have um, that our product manager Brenda Wolf um, puts together, and she's working on updating it um, with just different examples of initiatives and things like that. So if you wanna snag that URL, 
but we're going to look at it. All right, it looks like this. Um, and kind of goes through, gives some examples of initiatives, and we're going to look at two today. And I just want to talk about them a little bit. And you can kind of get a sense of like, okay, we've, you've said a lot of stuff, but like, what does it actually look like? Okay. So this is a site from Montgomery County in Maryland. And, okay. <laughs> and um, they want to reduce opioid overdose. Um, you can address opioid epidemic, that's what we call it. Um, but again, you adapt it and you put your own spin on it. And their different steps are prevention, intervention, treatment, and analysis. So this is good in that like it's very clear, you, are, you, like, you know what they're trying to do, and you can see the different ways that they're communicating how they're doing that, right? So different applications in here. Um, do you want to increase public awareness? And they have this YouTube video, a chart, and then this is a link to um, a Survey123 app for reporting drug activity, if you see it. So different ways to kind of get those citizen sensors out there in the world. And then for intervention, different applications so that you can see where the nearest pharmacy with naloxone is available. And this is a configuration of Web App Builder. And then for treatment, find the nearest treatment center. So these are like really pretty simple apps. Um, they're all part of the Address Opioid Epidemic Initiative. So they didn't actually have to go out and create these all themselves. They just said, this is our treatment center feature service. We're gonna plug it in and we automatically make this web app builder locator for them. And then they have recommendations and more resources. So this is a very like goal focused initiative. We want to reduce opioid overdose. Um, another thing that we've been seeing is initiatives about like different projects, like urban planning projects, things like that. So this is the city of Hoboken in New Jersey that this is the whole initiative about a park. And their goal here is to increase community awareness about this park. They want to get more like public feedback about this park and do so in a way where they don't have to meet in a library in a basement at six o'clock where the same people come over and over again, but you don't get everybody's opinion. And a lot of people don't know about it. So in here, it's, um, it reads as kind of like a narrative about um, what they're working on, all the public meetings that they've had. They have a survey in here. This is a link to a survey one, two, three, so that people can voice their opinion and give their feedback. And then the planners at Hoboken have more information and more knowledge for, for what to act on. Again, different apps. Things like that. Um, doo -doo -doo. In their Engage Now section, so they have a whole bunch of different pages for this one, rather than the MoCo one was just one. It was just one page. And they have a bunch of upcoming events. So they're telling people where they can convene in the physical space, rather than just taking the survey, people can get together and do charrettes, forums, things like that. Okay, so how do I develop an initiative? That resiliency park initiative, that's not something that we had out of the box. They did that themselves. They, they took the custom initiative and adapted it and add in their own steps, their own design, what have you. So if you're gonna do that, we have these lovely hexagons that tell you we need the tech, we need the process, we need the people. So we have the tech, you are the people, and together we kind of think about the process of how to go about doing this. So we have like some best practices and ways to think about it, but it's really like your content, it's your story, it's your process, it's you. And your team, there's people. There's other people that you're probably working with to, to get this done. So we have built in into the initiative different teams so that people can um, have the privileges to work on this. Not everyone in your org is probably going to have the privilege to 
work on this. And when I say privilege, I mean ArcGIS role. Um, so you have the initiative manager, GIS manager, staff contributors, and then we have that trusted collaborator from the community, so that person that came to eight events. And be like, hey, are you interested in helping out? They'll probably be like, yes, please, I thought you'd never ask. So thinking about designing initiatives, we want to define a set of goals. And we saw that in both of those initiatives that we had, they kind of had a clearly stated goal that they were trying to achieve. And these are usually like the broad initiative goals, right? They want to eliminate traffic deaths. They want to reduce homelessness. They want to raise awareness about this park. But I think it's important to have a specific initiative goal so that you can say whether this like initiative itself was successful or not because we want to eliminate traffic deaths down to zero. That's a very noble goal. But it's hard to look at numbers that change very slowly. But if we can say that this initiative is really like increasing um, even just like knowledge about it, right? That's doing something. It helps provide guidance for your work. It helps measure success. And goals can change over time. You know, you set a goal, like a personal goal at your job at the beginning of the year in January, and by December you're like, I don't even work on that stuff anymore. So these can, these can change over time. And we're thinking about goals. It's really the same kind of way that we think about goals to set for ourselves. We want to be smart about it. So for South Bend, they had a vacant lots initiative. Um, and even before they were working with Hub, they had this going on. They wanted to get 1,000 houses in 1,000 days. South Bend has a lot of vacant lots, and they wanted to get rid of or reimagine 1,000 of them. Um, so this is good. It's specific. It's measurable. It's attainable. It's relevant. It's time-oriented. It's smart. It was South Bend, Indiana. Which also like is good to think about that it's not just like huge cities like LA that's doing work like this. South Bend, Indiana is pretty small. Um, so that we can imagine how we can kind of do the similar things if we're in a smaller city. So continuing on with prep, we want to identify your audience. Some initiatives are internal, that's fine. Um, just like making sure that you know who you're talking about, like Graham was talking about before, like they had an initiative way of thinking. And then who's your subject matter expert? So if you're building an initiative around Vision Zero and getting all traffic related deaths down to zero, but you don't know anything about transportation, you should probably find someone who does. We can build apps till we're blue in the face, but like, are they really helpful? Is it the kind of stuff that we want to communicate and the details that we want to get and the information that we want to get back? So just having someone that's a domain expert is critical. So when we're going to think about what is going to go like on the page and everything, um, as we talked about before, a lot of cities are doing the similar stuff, right? We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can see what other people have been working on and maybe borrow some ideas and add it into ours. And then from that, it's really about deciding the story that you want to tell. What's the flow? You got to like storyboard it out. What are things that you can borrow and use? What kind of stuff do you? Um, are you going to invite yourselves? So these are two Vision Zero initiatives. On the left, we have LA. And on the right, we have, um, a, is it Norway or just a town in Norway? Oslo. It's Oslo, Norway. OK. So they have like some similar things across from each of them, but they're obviously, they're each unique style. Um, the one on the right, this is um, based off of the Vision Zero template that we have in the hub. And they've added some more. Um, apps in there, the app in the middle, but it kind of gives you, again, like a, a starting place to go from. Okay, content. So what are the actual things that we're putting in them? If you already have a bunch of applications surrounding the work that you've been doing, um, it's kind of helpful just to like put them up on a list and just to kind of see how they might be organized. And that gives you insight to how you can maybe like group them on a page and create a narrative and a helpful way for people to engage with them and, and um, go through them. And again, we want to make sure our language matches our audience. So we want to eliminate any jargon or extremely technical definitions so that everyone really understands what we're talking about. And if you're not really sure about 
kind of where to start or what kind of apps might be useful, we can think about our woes. We have our website, our apps dashboard, events, surveys, and story maps. And those are kind of like the five pillars of what we work with in different adaptations and configurations of those things. So this is um, an example of an initiative that was being created um, internally for the UN and just kind of like shows you different ways that people are dividing things up into sections and just like a whole lot of comments. And when you're starting your initiative, you're not starting in the tech. You're starting on paper, you're starting in meetings, you're kind of talking about it and crafting this idea and this flow, and then you're ready to go and putting it all in the tech. So that's the process part of it. And then presentation. So when we actually do get to the tech, we wanna remember who our audience is, again, and write for them. And this kind of goes into like site configuration, but we wanna make sure that everything's accessible, um, contrasting colors, et cetera, and images. So the first thing that people see when they come to your site is your header, your banner, that image. Just wanna make sure it's a good one. And there are so many tips um, out there to help you with that. There is a site there that is live and continuously updated that's gonna give you a bunch of different code snippets and examples for how to design your site. All right, so when we finally go into Hub Admin, and Graham's gonna show us this, we can create a custom initiative and add specific steps and applications that we have storyboarded out in the process part of it. Add members from our Hub team, give them editing permissions, and we wanna make sure that we're kind of testing early and we're testing often. So we can think about producing initiatives in kind of like an agile method so that we're getting lots of eyes on it early so that we can make any improvements that we need to make. And did it succeed? What's the point? We wanna think back to our goals that we had in the beginning. Um, what metrics were you going for? Have you reached them? You can integrate with Google Analytics or ArcGIS Online Analytics. Everything in Hub is backed by an online item. So when people view it, it shows up in the online analytics. And if you haven't hit them, like we can like reevaluate and reassess. Maybe. Maybe our goals have shifted, maybe we should modify them. And Graham's gonna give you a demo. Thanks, Courtney. So a good place to start is, you may have an existing open data site managed on your sites tab. This is the Hub Admin app, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Um, go take a look at like the data sets that are downloaded the most. Um, try to figure out like why people might be using them because often you might actually find um, there's maybe a existing policy or project that is driving that and maybe people are trying to discover it. Um, I know there's a lot of like, I would say less noble initiatives around just policies and notice of the government and trying to like work with the city but if you kind of pull those goals that people might have forward and build sites that are purpose built about them, um, that's a good way to go. If you license the hub, you get, or if you don't, you can join the Share Open Data Initiative, which is a good place to start if you haven't done open data. Um, in here we have all the different website and templates um, available. So we have a starting point open data site, a site about what open data is and why it's important, and then several data sets we recommend a city upload, you know, round 311 data, transit data, address data, schools data, and asking a, you know, a survey form for collecting missing data. Um, but if you have a goal in mind, um, first thing to do is to look and see if we've, we've begun that work for you. Um, this is a, a gallery of initiatives, it'll grow. Um, it's very meager at this point, um, but we don't wanna put incomplete ideas in. So we have a lot, I would say, on the editing phase, but not a lot, you know, we try to like make sure that they're successful with a customer uh, before we make a template available to you. Um, so I'll show you what it's like to join one of those, and then if you don't see something here, which I think for a lot of you, and depending on what you know, your leadership prioritizes as a goal, that may be the case, you can make one blank with this create new button, or you can uh, design it from this custom template, which has a few of those woes ideas, the website, the ops dashboard, survey, events, and story map. Not in that order. Um, so if I click in the preview, um, 
and I joined this initiative, and actually I'm just gonna hop over to one I already did for the sake of time. So this initiative is about trying to attract businesses to your city. Um, it's, um, I would say, a goal, if you look at these surveys that Pew Research do, this is a goal that is high on everybody's mind in a city. Um, everybody wants to drive business to their area, and have jobs and all the economic growth that that provides. Um, but how do you attract businesses and say, hey, this is a great place to work? A lot of today's solutions are run marketing campaigns and make static pages and kind of disconnect it. Um, so GIS offers a great solution because chances are is you're sitting on some data that relates to um, you know, land that's available, the existing businesses and things like that. Um, so when I pop in for the first time, I'm gonna actually delete what I've just done, um, but you have a tile here for each solution. So I have my website, um, I have an application, a story map, and a handful of surveys. And we try to start you off 80-ish percent of the way there. Um, and we try to pull forward those two things, the goal um, and targeting that audience that is the most external. So we wanna target the business. Um, so instead of just saying, hey, here's my parcels, here's my incentive zones, those are words that I think make sense to probably most of us in this room. This is where we, you know, this is where I want people to move. Um, we wanna kind of make that less technical. So we wanna show business owners why your city is an ideal place to attract top industry talent. Um, right off the bat, these templates will need some editing. You, you know, we sometimes put language in here that's generic, so you're gonna wanna make it your own. Um, if you've ever built a site in the hub, it's pretty easy to edit any website that we have. Um, it's a WYSIWYG editor. You can, you know, mouse over various parts of the page. They're all represented as cards, and you can, you know, basically edit anything that you want um, and we do this so that you don't have to know, you know, HTML to get it to look that way. You just have to work on, um, you know, what it says. So I might want to say, uh, you know, Arlington, Virginia is the place to build your business. So you can kind of customize it in a way um, that it will become yours. You can choose the image that we've purchased for you, um, or you can find a picture that you may have. Um, if you went to Courtney's customizing your open data sites or customizing your hub sites seminar, just be careful about attribution on those. Um, make sure you're allowed to use images on your website, things like that. Um, as I go through, I can turn on each of these applications. So I'm gonna do the same thing here and delete this one. Um, this, uh, this actually comes with a, a purpose-built economic development explorer. Um, and we ask for 29 pieces of open data, which is a lot. But the good news is you actually don't need to provide all of these to make this application come to life. Um, this is where you're going to find your data sets in ArcGIS that match, and where you can, you'll provide a match. So if I wanna provide my zoning, I wanna provide my special purpose zoning, downtown residential, mixed use, green sites. You're trying to you know, put all of the information in this explorer so that um, I'll show you in a moment, you can basically um, attract businesses and show them what it's like to have a business in your city. If you do have cities uh, data that matches something, you can go into your organization's data and find it. Um, this is where, you know, if you are the GIS person, it's, you, you probably know what your data is, but um, if uh, somebody is in your business working on this, um, they might need to like ask the GIS person what that data is. Um, also too, maybe there's some other data available from an organization on or around your jurisdiction. Um, but basically you're matching data to what, um, what we're asking for. Uh, so that when you click configure, we then set this application up for you, style the maps, handle all of that, link it up and put it in this initiative. And so one thing about demos of things getting created is it never happens as fast as it should. <laughs> Um, but everything in this initiative can be worked on by a team. Um, so uh, we're behind the scenes making groups in ArcGIS Online. Um, those groups allow everybody to edit everything in the initiative. So if I wanted to add somebody else in my organization that may be presenting with me right now, I can add them here and it's handled sharing access to all of the items in my initiative. Um, this is good if you have somebody who knows HTML for the website or if you have somebody who's like that survey question writing expert for surveys, you can just add them to your initiative and then in the hub they can edit all of the apps by clicking on them and clicking edit. So in this case we have um, 
this application, this is an explorer for my organization's extent. Um, it's private still. Um, actually, I'm gonna fix that by just going to here and sharing it to the public. So I don't have to log in, and then I can refresh. And, and this app is just about that kind of inform, really find, you know, the goal would be, I wanna attract businesses, and they should set a metric, maybe not advertise that metric to the citizens and the public, um, but I wanna attract five businesses in this quarter, or I'm sure there's an internal goal of growing, um, you know, growing. And so this lets people basically explore the, the area and find potential, you know, who lives there using Living Atlas data, and then finding zoning and development areas that is unique to my area so I know what properties are available. So really good in that kind of informed step. Another good one is story maps. Almost every initiative should have a story map for the person who's asking why. Um, we all know story maps are really great to explain a full narrative. So like the website's the quick hit, the story map is the detail as to why the city's spending tax dollars uh, working on something like this. And then listening to the public, you know, what, uh, what businesses do we want? How do people feel about it? Um, you know, these are some questions that, again, we did some research and we worked with customers on designing surveys that will help provide insight to you as cities um, and also provide an engagement point to people in the city and to businesses around what they prioritize and what type of incentives would make them move and hopefully attract businesses. Now, so that's great. If you're into this initiative, you know, we have hopefully an answer for you, but there aren't a whole lot in the gallery and there's a lot you would probably want to take on yourself. So the custom initiative is a good way to go. Um, and maybe my initiative is smaller than bring business to the city. It might just be um, improving knowledge of a permitting process or getting people permits faster or you know something like that. Decreasing calls maybe internally. So I wanted more people to know about something that already is happening, but I want to just put a why around that work in the external lens, meaning, hey, we don't want you to have to sit on the phone to do something, call us. Here's a website that explains what you need to do. Here's the, the, the relevant forms and links off to information. So I can make maybe my improved permitting uh, process initiative. Um, so same process. We makes a group in ArcGIS Online, a couple of them. One of them is an open data group for sharing any data sets relevant to this initiative. The other allows shared editing of everything that's in here. Um, I can go and I can take the, we call it like the starter initiative website that it's very generic. It's like put your goal here. Um, and at least that can serve as a place that I don't feel like I'm staring at a blank wall and trying to figure out what to paint on it. I at least have something pretty ugly to tweak, <laughs> but uh, at least something that I can work from. So now it's made my improved permitting process website. Um, I probably wouldn't advertise it as such to my public, like that's what we all know internally is uh, the initiative, but, um, but then basically we, you know, are showing some of those elements that Courtney said here right in the product. So put your blurb right there, pick a good image that's not this repeating geometric pattern sweep, show the stats of how many open permits there are and how long it takes, like think of all the things that make this interesting so that you can drive people to probably the work you're doing that's really great. Um, and then, um, all sites in the hub can use, you know, the header of your city. So you can always customize the header to fit your organization's website. Um, and basically, we're just packaging work you're probably doing in a different way. Um, similarly, there's some um, example applications around the upcoming events and a tour. And there are some example surveys of like generically get people's opinions about things or ask for priorities, um, collect more general feedback. Um, and then here's some way to measure a specific progress dashboard. So an ops dashboard that can measure something if you configure it uh, to do so. If you already have those things existing and you just need to connect it up, um, you can add your own existing apps here. If you need to make something net new, you can click new here. And that is really what an initiative is, is all about. It's putting that kind of, that external face on your work and giving it a website that hopefully fits in with you know, your city or your organization's existing homepage and kind of uh, threads that in very seamlessly. And it doesn't have to replace your open data site. I think data sites are still really, really interesting for a very specific audience. Like um, there is the, the civic hackers, there's the academics, the people doing school projects. They're still gonna look for data sites, um, but 
the number one way they're going to find you is on Google. Um, this is going to be something that hopefully gets shared by neighbors around in your area with you know different associations and different people who are interested as a resource. And um, kind of like that slide that we showed earlier, your city's website and your GIS, this is the GIS, it's just the external face um, for the kind of the non-GIS audience in this case. Um, and then from an events perspective, just so you can kind of see every, if I wanted to have an event talking about how to you know, improve permitting, um, I could click events. Uh, I think my resolving host, I love the internet. Well, I could click events and I can make an event. What it will do is it'll hang a page off my website and that page will allow people to register, uh, driving them to sign up and get that identity and come to a physical space. You could also, if you want to use any other event system you may already have, just put it in your website. Uh, that's good. Cool. So to recap, recap, recap. Um, <laughs> initiative thinking is considering the most external consumer of your work, trying to design for that, and thinking about what their goals would be. Um, and the initiatives in the ArcGIS Hub organize your work into steps. Um, finding somebody um, not in an IT function to help champion that work, um, remembering your audience, and re reflect and reassess as those initiative changes. These are some resources that we have. Um, I know the slides get shared every year, but we have documentation about ArcGIS Hub. Um, we have obviously ArcGIS Online documentation. Um, we are always on GeoNet. Goes right into several team members' email boxes. We try to be pretty active there. Um, and we uh, have these best practices slides here if you take a picture of that. Um, and we're in the expo hall for the rest of the week. So if you want to come and run your initiative idea by us, happy to walk you through it. Um, even if you're not licensing the full hub with community identity, you can still design your sites to be more initiative y just by thinking through those two things around packaging your data out there. Um, and we're really excited to be growing the number of initiatives and templates as we, as we go. Are there any questions? Yeah. So yeah, the question was, with the developer license, what access do you have to design an initiative? Um, we package, my internet comes back, we package one initiative that you can join um, as like included with ArcGIS Online. So you can join this top guy around open data. Um, what I would just say is just design it, put your apps in there, and um, you know, rename it from there. Um, if you want to see it become something in the initiative gallery, um, part of the roadmap is by, hopefully by user conference, we'll be able to allow you to publish those initiative templates into the gallery, just like any item in online. If it's public, everybody can see it. If you share that item to certain people, they can see it. Um, so that's some functionality that's coming. Other questions? Yeah. Yes, the question was, uh, what about Marketplace and how would these initiatives integrate with that? Um, the plan is to integrate those premium items into Marketplace for partners. Um, we have a couple of people that have already approached us about it, and if you're one of them, come hang out with us after. We can talk. Other question, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, that's actually, you're like reading from our roadmap. Um, the community organization, uh, that, that so part of the hub, if I click this community tab, it wasn't really a scope of this talk, is that you can give identity to citizens. And one of the core capabilities we want them to have in that separate community organization is the ability to suggest ideas. Um, and that would basically incept the different projects the city wants them to take. And then the act of following initiatives on the enterprise side and getting citizens to follow it could be like voting for various ideas. And then when it hits that tipping point, the city could say, I now sponsor this initiative and 
take that one from the community org and pull it into the city, attach it to the real GIS data, and migrate any work being done on the community front um, over in and basically you know sponsor that initiative and take it on um, from that point. Uh, it, it's the community functionality is is I would say young, um, but is definitely a direction that um, we hear about. Um, would love it afterwards if you follow up with me because I'd be interested in kind of taking a look at what others are doing. So always good to look at different things. Yes. Sir. Mm -hmm. I think that that is, yes, yeah, so the question was how do developers engage with this workflow? Um, some of the, that application we showed was actually one developed by a partner. Um, and right now it's being done kind of on an initiative by initiative basis. Um, but the, the ultimate vision to the marketplace question earlier is that you could build a hub ready app. We have some developers giving sessions about how to do that. Basically how to build an app that can be hosted in one place where the configuration of it lives in an item and that we can like generate that item for each customer with their organization name, with their organization's theme, and with their data plugged into the right places, um, and basically spit out that kind of completed application on the other end. Um, where that, that source code is hosted and packaging that initiative into the hub is, is gonna be where we integrate with the market. But um, effectively, the way this, this thing whole, all works is um, we take and generate, um, it's kind of a, it's like Mad Libs, if you take a completed, let's say something really simple like a web map, and you replace all of the URLs with variables that ask for specific name data sets, um, it's kind of like a half configured configurable app. We've done all the styling, we know what the use case is, all we need you to do is plug in just your data and this couple of field information and we'll, we, we roll over it and put it in there. And so from a development perspective, if you build your app to be configurable, using an item and using the JSON in that item to drive what shows on your app, then that will integrate really well with uh, the hub and eventually those types of things will be in the marketplace. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Um, no, following up, the question was around following, how do you drive follow up after initiative is excited? I think that's gonna be, depends on how the city works. That's that process part of Courtney's slide. Um, I don't necessarily think, we might, um, I'm sure there's some kind of like status of an initiative we could eventually put on there, but uh, we haven't kind of figured out the, the one answer that really works for a lot of that. Um, but I think there will be kind of a life of an initiative to a certain point, um, especially as elections happen too. Yes, yep, yep. Um, other questions? Great, give you a little bit of time back. Okay, go ahead. Um, currently we, we uh, allow people to sign up using Google or Facebook as social, so they have to have multiple identities there. Um, we are working with ArcGIS Online team to add sign up via email, um, but there's nothing to prevent people from using their Google, then their Facebook, then their emails, and signing up for lots of email accounts, um, but that. Right, um, I think part of that will also be events. Like I think there is a vetting process. You can't just trust that follow number 100%, but you have to kind of um, moderate the data. Um, we are also working with uh, allowing cities to you know, enable the expert citizens they trust to help you run initiatives. Because one thing is, you guys probably aren't growing tons of people to run new communities, but chances are if you have some events to kick off an initiative and you find 
somebody in a nonprofit role or an academic role or somebody that has some level of trust. Um, we're working on the ability to invite community members to actually help you edit and run the initiative um, so that it scales nicely um, and then you guys can oversee it. So you said, what about neighborhood watch like identities or? I yeah, that would be so cool. <laughs> um, Um, I think the way we see it is like I don't. I think citizens will still use you know Facebook and Nextdoor and those things to talk to each other, um, but this is the city-sponsored digital space that influences policy to some extent, um, and is also offering capabilities. I mean that we breeze past it, but the fact that users get uh, logins in an ArcGIS organization means that we can unlock different functionality for them. But the key is we don't want people to have to you know no ArcGIS to do it, we want to expose the right functionality through the initiatives and through the websites. Um, so the survey is the really obvious first one, but um, there will be probably more of those types of functionalities of like, let me put my address in, or let me vote and follow citizen ideas, let me comment about these initiatives, and, and try to drive a place where people will still probably talk on next door, like citizen to citizen, but when they want to move that conversation in front of the city, they don't have to just go to general public forums or stare at kind of government websites, there's things that are actually there to, you know, throw ideas out and do things like that. Mm -hmm. oh, blockchain, got it. That's cool, yeah. Uh, your valuation just tripled. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't think we're, I think our answer for how we're gonna do citizen identity is gonna be probably the way ArcGIS does identity, just to integrate well. Um, but we did do, I mean, so this is, just so you can see, if I'm a citizen, this is, I'm into this, I wanna, I wanna run a walk time analysis to see what businesses are available near a certain property. Um, all I have to do is, you know, put in my credentials and I can, without an invite, basically get an account, um, assuming my, this is gonna be the F2 factor. Why did I ever do that? <laughs> it kills every demo, you know? It's like, right, let me take my cell phone out. But yeah, I basically made a, a Gmail account in my City of X community organization. Um, and we, at least you have email. I don't know if it's gonna be as authentic as something more sophisticated, but um, it is kind of in the, like she said, the broader platform. Good questions, any others? Thank you so much. Have a good evening.